Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. Today, we are going to react to a true crime TikTok completion video. Make sure you got your forensic gloves on, because this one's going to be a bloody one. Let's watch. Do you guys remember the two girls who recorded their murder before their bodies were found near a wooded area? Trying to identify the suspect in this photo and this voice. <laughs> On February 2017, 13-year-old Abby Williams and 14-year-old Liberty German were walking along Delphi Historic Trails, Indiana, when they snapped these photos right before they went missing that evening. Police suspected that the man in this photo was involved in their disappearance and murder, but they didn't know who this man was. The girls' bodies were found the next day very close to where they took those photos, and police received multiple tips that the man in the recording and photo on Liberty's phone was 50 year old Richard Allen. Richard was arrested and charged but he pleaded not guilty and kept his innocence. But recently on April 3rd of this year Richard called his wife Kathy and confessed to murdering both Abby and Liberty. Investigators believe that Richard forced the girls down a hill and took their life with a 40 caliber. The psychology of it is what drives a person to kill innocent little girls especially when it's an older guy that I will never understand. Today I googled which country has produced the most serial killers and honestly number one is insane. Right, in the number five is Italy. They have produced 97 serial killers. Finally getting mentioned in one of my lists, I see you comment section, is Canada at number four with 106. That's a staggering 0.29 per 100,000 people. Now number three is an unfortunate regular on all of my lists, South Africa with 117 murderous individuals. The runner up is England with 100 166, with the most notable being the infamous Angel Maker. She killed almost 400 babies in the 19th century. I told you number one was insane and I didn't lie because USA obliterates this list. They have a staggering 3,204 known serial killers, which is approximately 19 times more than the second highest. That means almost one in every 100,000 people is a serial killer in the US. You know what was most surprising on that list was Canada at fourth place. I thought they were a peaceful country. I guess I was wrong. Police have arrested a Chucky doll for threatening members of the public with a knife. This month, police in Mexico arrested a doll. Terrifyingly, they had been made aware of a Chucky doll who, along with its owner, were threatening the public in Monclova. If you're not already aware, the doll comes from the 1988 film Child's Play. In the movie, the serial killer turns into the doll, which then begins a terrifying crime spree. The owner of the doll has only been identified as Carlos N. He was reportedly scaring the public with the doll, threatening them with a knife and demanding money off them. Both Carlos and the doll were charged with disturbing the peace and putting others' integrity at risk. The doll was handcuffed and taken to the police station. They both had mugshots taken and there has been some controversy over whether or not the officers were taking their job seriously. The police officer who put cuffs onto the Chucky doll has been reprimanded. I think they were just having a laugh. It's all in good fun, but still, come on. It's a doll. Unless... These prisoners are allowed to have pets if they're on good behavior. And the only fights they seem to get in is who has the cuter cat, just watch. <laughs> in this prison, a good prisoner can get a cat. They walk around every day to discuss whose cat is more lovely. The uncle is very satisfied with his kitten. That's Hold awesome. All day. These kittens were originally street cats. If no one adopts, they will be euthanized. So the warden put forward the cat rescue plan. Prisoners can adopt a cat as long as they obey the rules. The bald uncle said he was not interested in cats, but I can't help but start to the cat. This uncle became the first person to adopt a cat and the other inmates, so everyone was positive. Soon more and more people received their kittens. Their eyes are full of happiness. Prisoners work actively to exchange snacks and toys for kittens, just to take care of your kitten better. They often walk around arguing about whose cat is more lovely. The result is always red in the face. Soon the prisoner will serve his sentence. Uncle asked his kitten what to do. Can you take the kitten home together? At this time, the cat has become his best partner. Once vicious criminals also have a gentle side. Finally, the warden agreed to his request. Uncle is happy to take the cat home. Go out to what? Look at the cat in the hat. And this prisoner seems pretty happy, but the cat uh, does not. But I think this rule is a very good idea. Come on, man. We're trying to keep it serious here. But in all honesty, that was pretty cute. <laughs> 
That's a pretty good idea, actually. This TikToker made the following disturbing TikTok video before fatally shooting 16-year-old Caitlin Stone. Chelsea Ship, 25, and Cody Arnold, 22, of Vider, Texas, were both charged with murder back in June of this year. The killing occurred back on March 26th of this year. According to the police report, the teen was fatally shot in the back of the head while sleeping. Through witness statements, the motive may have been the pregnancy. Stone had reportedly received a positive result on a home pregnancy test. Ship told Arnold that he was going to get into trouble for getting her pregnant. Ship also said that she was going to take care of it herself. Arnold apparently was involved romantically with both Stone and Ship. A preliminary autopsy showed no sign of pregnancy. Ship and Arnold remained in the Jefferson County Correctional Facility on bonds of $1 million each. I think she was just using the pregnancy as a ploy to separate them. But man, just guys, be careful what you say, especially to the wrong people. This true crime case puts me off copying any TikTok viral trends. Teens using the Randonautica app expected a fun scavenger hunt. They actually stumbled across a double murder. After seeing the random location generator app go viral on TikTok, the group from Seattle made a gruesome discovery. TikTok is well known for sparking trends and I for one am definitely influenced by cool things I see others doing on the app. If you cast your mind back to 2020, the app Randonautica was really popular on TikTok. The app lets you randomly generate a nearby location that you're encouraged to explore. I was definitely tempted to download the app and see what I could find on it, but after hearing about this case, I am glad that I stayed put. In June 2020, the app led a group of teenagers from Seattle to a beach. The exact location that the app sent them to ended up being quite a rocky area and the group soon noticed a black suitcase. Initially joking around and hoping that it was a suitcase full of money, the group decided to open it up. However, when they opened the suitcase, they noticed that whatever was inside was wrapped in black bin bags and they also noticed a really unpleasant odour. Thankfully, they decided to call the police. Police and fire trucks soon swarmed the beach as it dawned on the group that they'd made a horrifying discovery. The suitcase housed the bodies of Jessica Lewis and Austin Wenner. The pair's landlord, Michael Dudley, is due to go on trial for their murders. Some people believe he's responsible and it may have been over a disagreement about rent. Okay, we covered this story on one of the previous true crime TikTok compilation videos, but it's still saddening to hear that. Haunting facts about serial killers that you'll want to forget, part one. After raping his blindfolded victims, the Golden State Killer would be super quiet and pretend like he was gone, and right when the victims would try to untie themselves or go for their phone, he would scare the hell out of them. Jeffrey Dahmer attempted to make sex zombies out of his victims by drilling holes into their head while they were still alive and pouring acid into the holes. American serial killer Albert Fish once cooked and ate a little girl and sent a letter to her parents describing how she tasted. Colombian serial killer Pedro Alonso Lopez raped and murdered over 300 girls. He was in prison for 18 years when he was moved to a psychiatric hospital where they declared him to be sane and he was set free, even though he stated that he planned on killing again. He was released in 1998 and no one knows where he is or what he's doing. That just made me sick to my stomach. Ugh. TikTokers Who Did Terrible Things, Episode 34. Lynn Casey Parnell, otherwise known as Know Your Truth 99 on TikTok, creator class type, TikTok Live, specialty, battler, claim to fame, whacked out beyond belief. Well, the 37-year-old TikToker out of Illinois has been on the platform for quite a while. 
battling people and making a decent amount of money during her live streams. However, just recently, Parnell has plunged into the spotlight due to a rather disturbing controversy. You see, back in 2011, she, along with a bunch of other individuals, had been attending a party and pretty much everyone inside that home was highly inebriated on various different substances. And pregnant at the time, Lynn actually ended up going into labor inside this home. She then went in the bathroom, gave birth, pulled him out of the toilet, wrapped him in a towel, assuming he had passed away, and sealed him into a garbage bag. It wasn't until several hours later, authorities had been notified. However, it had been far too late cause of death, asphyxiation from being placed into that garbage bag. Parnell was then sentenced to three years for manslaughter. In addition to this, since this whole story has came to light, Casey has either deactivated or privated most of her socials, including both of her TikTok accounts. You know what it is, placing her on the list of. These stories as they go, they're getting worse and worse. <laughs> All right, let's keep going. We need to talk about the smiling dog. The smiling dog is a demonic creature that looks like a dog but has human teeth. Photos of this creature were sent to people all over the world. And once a photo was seen, the smile dog would enter the viewer's dreams. And in the dream, you'll feel a need to ask the creature one question. What do you want? Then the smile dog will always reply with spread the word. After that, you'll have three days to grant the smile dog's wishes. And if you don't send any videos or photos of the smile dog to someone else, the photo you received will start to deform showing you a much more disturbing version of the smile dog that some people think is its true form. Some people have even said the smile dog's nightmares are so bad that its victims avoid sleeping altogether, weakening their mind and making them even more vulnerable till the smile dog comes out of their dreams and into their reality to further torment them. So send this video to someone else to spread the word of the smile dog. All right, guys, you heard her. We all saw it, and now we're all in this together. Spread the word. So they finally caught this uh, Long Island uh, serial killer. Oh, did you hear about that, Mariah? Yes, I did. Did you hear about what Howard Stern said on his on his radio show back no. in 2011? So this is crazy. They catch this guy um, who was the serial killer. Um, he was an architect, like a white collar business guy. Um, he drove a Chevy truck. They found his like DNA on like a pizza box and all this stuff. Okay. And so I'm telling you all these details. Because when Howard Stern was talking about it in 2011, nearly 12 years ago, this is him, like, talking about it, uh, saying, oh, if they catch the guy, this is probably what he's like. Put it, put it up to the mic. In the summer, they're now saying they think one killer is responsible for all the bodies found in the Gilgo Beach area. Ten sets of human remains have been discovered since December of last year, and only five have been identified so far. They found them all on the beach. I don't think uh, it's going to be a, a, like a group of people like you just said. I think with, when they find this, I think it's going to be one guy. Mm -hmm. Probably from Long Island, like National People Park or something. <laughs> and I think it'll come down to DNA. You know what I mean? Yeah. You get it from like a body and then he matches to some guy eating a pizza or, or a pizza box or something oh, like what? that. But it's probably one guy and he's got a dark side. Real unassuming guy. Probably has a white collar job. Mm -hmm. Probably like an architect or a. What? And that's true. <laughs> wow. That just proves to me that Howard Stern should be a detective. If he wasn't on the radio, he would have made out to be a really good detective. Belle killed her mom and then texted a photo of her body to her dad. In 2013, Rachel Hudson and her family were supposed to be celebrating Thanksgiving at their home in Virginia. However, the holiday would take a horrendously sinister turn. Rachel's mum was terminally ill 58-year-old Susan Lee. Rachel had been her mum's carer since she was just nine years old. On the evening in question, Rachel and her dad got into an argument. When her dad left the house the next day to make the most of the Black Friday sales, Rachel did something unthinkable. She took a weapon out of the wardrobe and loaded it. She apparently thought about unaliving herself at this point, but she didn't want to put her mum through the trauma of finding her body. She then walked into the room where her mum was and said, I'm sorry, this is what has to happen. Her mum apparently told her, you're crazy, and this is the point where Rachel killed her mum. When she texted her dad to break the news to him, he obviously didn't believe what she was saying. She then took a photo of her mum's body and texted it over to her dad. 
Rachel was sentenced initially to 50 years in prison, but this was reduced to 18 years because of an apparent undiagnosed mental illness. I guess that the daughter was already fed up and this was boiling up to a point where it's just, it was all over. This is Mr. Swirl, one of the worst pedophiles in world history. And let me tell you, this story is really disturbing, so viewer discretion is advised. So this is Mr. Swirlface himself, Christopher Paul Neal. He was born in Canada in 1975. So Christopher had a pretty unremarkable childhood, but it should be stated here that he wanted to become a Catholic priest. But after the seminary denied him because he wasn't properly qualified, he decided to become a teacher instead. So Christopher eventually moved out of Canada. He moved to South Korea. That's where he was employed as a teacher. And suddenly all of these images of CP started circulating around the internet. Christopher appeared in over 200 images of CP that he produced himself. And in every photo that he produced, he always put this swirly effect over his face, thinking that it would obscure his identity. Well, eventually German computer experts were able to unswirl the image. They produced this image to the left and a number of people who knew Christopher contacted Interpol and told them, this is that guy. So once he was identified, Christopher fled to Thailand. That's where he decided he would make his great getaway. And while he was living in Thailand, he employed the services of a young boy who would go out to local internet cafes and bring Christopher other young boys that he would abuse and take photos of. But this didn't last long and obviously didn't work out for Christopher. In the year 2007, towards the end of the year, he was finally arrested by the Thai police. There's nothing that brings me more joy than seeing all these officers around this guy. And one thing that should be noted about Christopher is his unrepentant nature when he's photographed. You'll see what I mean. Pictures like these were taken by the press when he was finally arrested and brought to justice. So in Thailand, Christopher was sentenced to 39 months in prison and he was handed a $1,700 plus fine. But he later admitted to the crime, he was eventually released, and then he returned to Canada. Upon his return to Canada, he was immediately arrested at the Vancouver International Airport. Now, while Christopher was in Canada, CP was found on his phone and laptop. He was sentenced to a number of years in prison. But in March of 2017, Christopher was released from prison and he now lives in Vancouver somewhere, according to the internet. That's right, Mr. Swirlyface is currently out on the streets. I didn't know this. I think this is an absolute injustice to all the victims of this guy. This is absolutely a horrific story and I cannot believe he's not serving more time for appearing in over 200 images of CP. It's crazy. But yeah, let me know below. Do you think this guy should still be in prison? That guy should definitely still be in prison. This couple left their baby unattended for up to two weeks. Viewer's discretion is strongly advised. In 2014, Zachary Cohen met Cheyenne Harris, and a year later, they had a daughter together. In 2016, Cheyenne became pregnant again, and Zachary had influenced her to use drugs, even though she was pregnant. Cheyenne quickly became addicted, and she gave birth to a premature baby in the bathtub. Zachary started to have doubts if this was even his child because people were telling him that this child did not resemble him at all. On August 30th of 2017, Zachary came home from work, he made some food for his daughter, and he went straight to his bed without checking on his baby, Sterling. Around 11 a.m., Cheyenne came to tell him that their son had died. Zachary went into Sterling's bedroom to touch his forehead, and that is when he realized that Sterling was ice cold and there was blood coming from his mouth. Zachary called 911 and the autopsy revealed that Sterling's cause of death was homicide. He died from dehydration, malnutrition, and infection. Sterling had been left in a baby swing for up to two weeks. He sat in a diaper filled with feces and he had a diaper rash so severe that it led to development of open wounds on his skin. And because of this, E. coli bacteria from the feces entered his bloodstream. Poor baby Sterling had crawling maggots on his skin, in his diaper, his clothes, and even on the swing. Zachary claimed that he never changed Sterling's diaper because he had a very weak stomach and that it was Cheyenne's job. It appeared that the couple cared for their daughter, but for some reason they neglected Sterling. One day old diaper is going to be noticeable, so there's no way that they did not smell that heavy odor for up to two weeks. They simply just chose to ignore it. October 25th of 2017, both Zachary and Cheyenne were arrested and charged with first degree murder. 
Both have been found guilty and have been sentenced to life in prison. This case truly breaks my heart, and baby Sterling deserved better than this. Dude, what is wrong with people? That's, yeah, that breaks my heart too. Poor little guy. I hope he's in a better place now. Well, guys, that is the video. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment. And as always, I will see you on the next one. Peace.